Hi everybody. So we'll be starting in about 30 seconds. Welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to help you learn how to describe animals in English. Let me just do an audio check here to make sure everything is working. I think it is. So we'll start in about 12 seconds. Let me uh, make sure that I'm ready to go. I think that I am. Four, three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to help you learn how to describe animals in English. This is a topic that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I did a lesson on animals a long time ago and when I did that English lesson, I realized that certain animals are almost always described a certain way and so I thought it would be fun today to do an English lesson about how to describe animals. I think that I have almost every animal. No, I don't have every animal in the world but I have uh, almost 42 animals and a description of each animal. A descriptive word for each of them. Before we get started though, I want to welcome Jim and Brad the Canadian who Canadians who are both here to moderate the chat. Please be civil in the chat. Please only have English conversations if you are a viewer here today uh, and please enjoy yourself. Um, if you do have a question during the lesson, there will be a link shared in the chat. It's also in the description below. You can use that to go to a form where you can ask your question. So, please keep the questions on topic. And again, the topic today is describing animals. I do wanna say hi to Lolly Lolly, Key Park, Naresh, Naomi, Anuat. Um, let's see, Alberto, Mode Eggs, Rod the Brazilian English teacher, Norma. And if I scroll back, I'm sure there are more familiar names. I know Linda is here as well. Vito is here. Uh, let me scroll back. Grace Chin is here as well. YH, so many familiar names in the chat. Ruslan said hi earlier. Snazzy is here. Lucci is here as well. Good to see all of you. I hope that you enjoy this English lesson about describing animals. So, here we go. Remember, even though this might seem like a vocabulary lesson, it's more than that in the sense that I use a lot of phrases while I'm talking about each word as well. And before I get started, I just wanna say hi to Semra as well. Hi, Semra. So, the first word that we're going to learn is the word dirty. So, when uh, an animal is dirty, when a person is dirty, when something is dirty, it's the opposite of clean. The animal that might be most known for being dirty would be a pig. So, you can see with this lesson today, I put the name of each animal underneath. I think most of you know all of your animal names or most of your animal names in English but I thought it might be a good idea to include that as well. So, the pig might be considered a dirty animal. Uh, we do not have pigs on our farm but pigs are sometimes known to root around in the mud or wallow in the mud. That means they roll around and lay in the mud. I think they do that to stay cool and I think they root around with their nose to find roots and other things to eat. So, the pig might be considered a dirty animal. Personally, I actually think they're rather cute but they can also be considered dirty. Probably the word most associated with a lion is the word ferocious. When an animal is ferocious, it means it attacks quickly. It's violent. It hunts other animals in order to kill them and eat them. I know that's a little crazy but an, a lion is probably known as the most ferocious animal in the world. Uh, when I saw a lion at the zoo one time, I was actually a little bit scared. I should have put that in the lesson about uh, our fears but the lion is definitely considered ferocious. And then we have slow and fast. So, the slowest animal or the animal that you think about most often when you see the word slow would be a turtle or a tortoise. So, turtles and tortoises are different. I don't know the exact difference between them except that it sounds like turtles spend an amount of time in the water and on land whereas a tortoise primarily lives on land. But if you think about the slowest animal in the world, one animal that might come to mind is the turtle. 
fast. So, the animal that might come to mind when you think about fast is the cheetah. I think one of the fastest land animals but we also might think about the rabbit or hare, okay? So, the rabbit um is uh, sorry, I'm just losing track of my train of thought here. I wanna make sure give me one second here to check something. There we go. We're good. Um we often think about the rabbit. There is a story, the tortoise and the hare. So, again, rabbit and hare are fairly similar. A hare might be a slightly bigger rabbit if I understand correctly. Um but a turtle is considered slow. A rabbit is considered fast. In fact, on my tractor, there's a lever and at one end, there's a turtle and at the other end, there's a rabbit. Those are the symbols on the tractor and if you put it on the turtle, the engine is goes slowly. If you put it on the rabbit, the in, engine goes very, very quickly. Slimy. So, there are a few different animals that you would think are slimy. When something's slimy, it's slippery and it has like a slime on the bottom of it. The snail is a very slimy animal. When a snail goes across a surface, it leads a little trail of slime. It's a little bit um gross would be another word we might use in English. We also have things like slugs. Slugs look a little bit like a snail but they don't have a shell. Sometimes slugs eat our baby plants when we plant them in the field. But definitely a snail is a slimy animal. Massive. So, there are several words to describe an animal that is large. You could say enormous, gigantic, massive. Um The elephant is usually the animal that comes to mind when I think about the word massive uh and when I'm thinking about animals as well. Maybe the blue whale is another animal that comes to mind. Um certainly those are gigantic, massive, enormous animals. Um I was actually afraid of elephants when I was in South Africa. They are when I saw an elephant in real life, it was bigger than I actually expected it to be. It was a little bit frightening. Poisonous. So, there's a slight difference between poisonous animals and venomous animals. A poisonous animal, sometimes if you touch a poisonous animal or if you eat a poisonous animal, it is harmful. It is bad for you. You don't want to eat something that is poisonous. Poisonous plants and poisonous animals are not good for you. They can either harm you or even kill you. When we talk about snakes though, um we're talking about animals that are venomous. Venomous animals try to bite you and when they bite you, they inject venom into your body. So, a snake is a venomous animal. The puffer fish would be known as a poisonous animal. Both very, very bad for you. You don't want to be bitten by a snake and you don't want to accidentally eat something or touch something that is poisonous. When we talk about um an animal that is beautiful, the most common animal would be the horse. Uh human beings have used horses for a very long time to help them do farm work, to help them around their properties, to help them build roads a long time ago, to pull carriages or carts. But the horse also has a beauty to it. When you see a horse running and you see all the horse's muscles underneath their um their fur or their hair, you realize that it is a very beautiful animal. This is why people love having horses. Not only are they fun to ride but they're also fun just to watch as they run around the field and graze in a pasture. Graze is when you eat grass by the way. Dangerous. When an animal is dangerous, it means that you have to be careful when you are around it. There are a lot of dangerous animals in the world. One animal that might appear to be safe to be around is but is actually quite dangerous is the hippopotamus. The hippopotamus is considered a very dangerous animal and again, we have two names for it. We say either hippo or we say hippopotamus. Maybe try saying hippopotamus a few times. It's a little tricky. Um it's a little tricky (laughs) to uh pronounce. Noisy. So, for me, when I think about animals that are noisy, the first animal I think of is the bird. There are a lot of birds outside my window in the morning. 
often I get woken up by birds chirping uh, outside my window. There are a lot of birds in my area. There are a lot of trees and I think there's just a lot of birds in the trees and they are extremely noisy in the morning. It's a little bit uh overwhelming. So, when I think about noise nosy <laughs> noisy sorry. Nosy is when you wanna know other things about people. Noisy is when you make a lot of noise. And then I have the word intelligent. When I think about an animal and I think about the word intelligent, I naturally think of the dolphin. When I would go to marine land, which is a place close to us that has dolphins, they would do all kinds of tricks. They were very intelligent animals. The dolphin, I think, has a very big brain and so that makes the dolphin very, very intelligent. Um, I think some people think in dolphins are more intelligent than human beings even but I don't think so. I think we I think we have a lock on that. When you have a lock on something, it means you're the one that has that characteristic. No one else does. But hey, let's look at some questions. Let me do an audio check here. If you're wondering, um let's see here. Let me double check something. There we go. Yes, we're good. Okay, let me get the first question up on the screen. Uh let's see here. First question is from Vito. How can I describe an animal who just sleeps and eats? I have a tortoise and she is learning English as well. Improving slowly. Thanks, Bob. Um so, an animal that just eats and sleeps, we might say that they are sloth-like or lethargic. So, the sloth is an animal that doesn't move very quickly and so, sometimes we use the characteristics of that animal to describe activities of other animals or people. So, I would say um it sounds like your tortoise is being a little bit lazy, a little bit lethargic or a little bit sloth-like. Uh let's get to the next question. Uh Tripto says, hello, Mr. Bob. Which animal is your favorite and why? So, currently, I don't really have a favorite animal but when I was a kid, my favorite animal um was definitely the cat. I had a lot of pet cats on the farm um and I really liked them. I would name them. I would go out and I would play with them when I was a kid. I really enjoyed them. Right now, yeah, I don't really have a favorite animal. I really like Oscar, our dog though. He's very, very cool. Um next question from Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Are grizzly or black bear attack incidents common in Canada? preservation areas as I read the news about the attack in the USA between now and then. Thank you. They're not super common but they do happen. People need to be very cautious when they are out in the wilderness. Um in Canada, probably the most dangerous animal would be the bear. The bears tend to come to try and get food from humans if they are camping or hiking in the wilderness. Um so, I would say attacks aren't very common but they do happen. You need to be careful especially when you are in western Canada. You have to be careful because there are grizzly bears. Uh let's see here. Yaroslav says, hi, teacher Bob. No question. Have a great weekend, sir. Take care. Thanks, Yaroslav. Um oh, let me just do sorry, I'm getting weird messages on my screen. Everything's working great though. So, I'm gonna keep going. Um Linda. Linda says, hi, Bob. I just got a new dog, doggy, and I talked to her in English. How can I teach her to pee or poop outside? Go pee, go potty. Are other expressions commonly used? Thanks. So, we would say that you are training your dog to go to the bathroom outside or you're training your dog to pee or to go poop outside. That's exactly what we would say. You probably have a little pooper scooper. So, you can scoop up the poop and put it in a bag, especially if you live in the city. It's very polite to do that but you are basically toilet training your dog even though you're not training the dog to use a toilet. You're teaching it to go outside. I don't have a lot of experience with that. Whenever we get a new dog, Jen usually trains the dog um and I don't have a lot of involvement in that. Renata, good morning, Bob. What does skittish mean and what pet did you have as a kid? Have a great day. So, horses can sometimes be skittish. That means the horse isn't used to being around humans. So, when a horse is skittish, it's sometimes like if you walk up to it, it runs away or 
it kind of wags its tail and makes a funny horse sound like that's that's bob the canadian's horse sound but a skittish horse or a skittish animal tries to stay away and my favorite pet as a kid would have been my cats yes for sure um natalia do you talk about people using adjectives and animals in as in the examples she is a sub snake no he is a real deer no no we don't use that very often um I'm trying to think Natalia if there's any ways that we just like sloth like we might say that but um I can't think of any any other like we don't normally use those those are interesting though I'm sure that that makes sense to me right if someone is evil and cunning you would describe them as being snake like maybe but it's not very common in English. Um Dimitri says Hello, dear Mr. Bob. How are you doing these days? My question is, what exotic animal would you like to have? You can choose from a slime to an elephant. Thanks. I don't know. I'm not really a pet person. So, I don't think I would want to have a pet. I do know that there was a farmer close to me when I was a teenager and he had a chicken farm but he also owned a tiger. I would be scared to own a tiger. I would be afraid that the tiger would bite me. I would be afraid that the tiger would escape but I was surprised that he had a tiger as a pet. That is not common in Canada. In fact, I think it's illegal in Canada now to have a tiger as a pet. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. It looks like I might have to wait for a few more questions to pop up. Just let me check something here. Um oh, I think I did have one more. Let me get that one back on the screen. Let's get questions back on the screen for a sec. This is from Naomi. Hi, teacher Bob. I wonder why dog days mean hot days in summer. Thank you so much. I'm not sure except that when it's really hot, Oscar, our dog, likes to lay in the shade and sometimes he pants. That's when he goes, (laughs) that's, I'm gonna do a lot of animal actions this morning, aren't I? Um I think that the dog days of summer are, it's probably because of that. Dogs generally in the summer find a shady place if they can and they don't run around a lot. They're not very active um and they pant a lot. So, their tongue is out and they breathe very quickly and sometimes Oscar drools like the saliva from his mouth falls off the end of his tongue when it's really hot. Uh Mode says, hi, mister Bob. How would you describe Canadian geese? In addition to ornery, of course. Thank you 360 times. I think I have geese on here coming up mode. So, we'll look at that. Yes, I have geese. Uh, There's a way to describe them and you'll see in about 20 minutes or so. We'll get to that one. Um but let's see here. Let's switch back to the lesson. So, we just finished intelligent furry. So, when an animal is furry, it means it is covered in hair but that hair is very soft to the touch. There are a lot of furry animals in the world. Humans are not very furry. Um sometimes men will grow lots of facial hair and they'll have lots of hair on their back and we might say that he that that person's very hairy but animals we would describe as furry, okay? So, this fox is very furry. The fox has a lot of hair that when you have a lot of hair on an animal, you would say they are furry. Rabbits are furry. Cats are furry. Dogs are furry. Uh, human beings, you would though describe as hairy. That would be the right way, right way to do it. Um let's see here. Weird. So, whenever I see the platypus, I think it's a weird animal. It's probably a very nice animal. I don't know a lot about it but I think to myself, the platypus seems weird because it has feet like a duck and it has like a bill like a like a duck but it kinda looks more like a beaver or a muskrat. So, it's kind of this strange combination of different animals. There's always a joke that the platypus was made out of leftover parts from other animals but certainly um I'm not sure if it's nice to say but I do think the platypus is a little bit weird when you look at it. So, we have cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals. Cold-blooded animals cannot maintain their body temperature, okay? So, cold-blooded animals often will lay in the sun in order to warm up. 
cold-blooded animals do not produce heat through their metabolism, okay? So, they cannot keep themselves warm. Warm-blooded animals on the other hand use their digestive process, their metabolism, their use of food energy to create heat in their body and to maintain a constant temperature. Humans are warm-blooded as well. Although, if you want to know an adjective to describe a human who's very mean, you might say they're cold-blooded, okay? So, we do use that adjective to describe humans. But lizards, snakes, turtles, I think are all cold-blooded animals and cows, dogs and even humans are all warm-blooded. Big difference between the two. Domesticated. So, domesticated animals are animals that a long time ago, thousands of years ago were wild animals but now they live with humans either as pets or as farm animals. The dog is the best example of this. All dogs I think are descended from some kind of wolf or fox, probably a wolf but a dog is a domesticated animal. Dogs usually don't live in the wild. Sometimes they escape or they run away from their owners and they'll live on the street or they'll live in little packs Um, but dogs are definitely domesticated. So, Oscar relies on us for food. He's not a dog who hunts for food. He is a domesticated dog. So, when animals are domesticated like cows or horses, sheep and goats, we often either they are farm animals or they are pets. And the opposite of course would be wild animals. So, here we have the rhino or rhinoceros. A wild animal is an animal that lives in the wild, lives in the wilderness, lives in the forest, lives outside of the city. Sometimes wild animals even live in the city. Canadian geese and raccoons live in cities but they are also considered wild animals. So, a wild animal is any animal that finds its own food, reproduces in the wilderness, has babies um, and does not need humans to survive or exist. We also have animals that are endangered. An endangered animal is an animal that may eventually not exist, okay? So, an endangered animal, actually the bald eagle was endangered. When I was doing my research for this lesson, I found out that it's no longer endangered but it was on the endangered species list. Um and then I just wanted to mention there's actually a bald eagle that lives on my farm. I thought they only lived in parts of the United States but we saw one uh on multiple occasions. We've seen a bald eagle here on the farm. It's a beautiful, beautiful bird. So, it was endangered. It was at risk of going extinct. There was a risk that there would be no more um bald eagles on the planet but now it is no longer endangered. So, that's really cool. Extinct. So, there are animals that have gone extinct. The dodo is one example. I think Mauritius uh is an island where this bird lived. It didn't have the ability to fly and so, it was very easy to hunt them and to eat them and then eventually they were extinct for a number of reasons. I think because they hunted them a lot but also I think because there might have been diseases involved. But when an animal no longer exists on the planet, we say that it is extinct. It's sad when an animal goes extinct. So, it's nice when if an animal is on the endangered species list and we work hard as humans to stop uh them from going extinct. Always a nice thing to do. Feral. So, feral animals are animals that were domesticated but have now escaped or don't live with humans or maybe they ran away and started to reproduce on their own. There are places in the world where there are feral cats. These are cats that live in the wild as if they're wild animals. There are places where there are feral dogs. I think there's even feral chickens. I think chickens can even um, escape and live on their own. So, chickens are an animal that we domesticated but sometimes they go back to the wild when they escape their chicken coop and they can become feral. Um around here, we don't have a lot of feral cats or feral dogs. Although, when I was a kid, there was a pack of feral dogs that was going around um trying to get into people's barns and eventually, I think the Humane Society came and found them. 
fluffy. So, chick. So, you have chickens. When chickens lay eggs, sometimes those eggs hatch into chicks uh, and chicks are very fluffy. This is a little bit different than furry. When something is fluffy, it's very, very soft to the touch, okay? So, little baby chicks are very fluffy. They have tiny, tiny feathers um, and they're just super, super soft. So, chick is definitely something that is fluffy. Um let me see here. Horned. So, animals that have horns are called horned. So, horned sheep. You have goats that have horns. You have many, many types of animals that have horns. We would say they are horned animals. So, a horned animal is something like obviously the sheep, deer, elk, those types of things or moose. We have moose in Canada that also have horns. Very, very interesting. Mangy. So, I didn't wanna put a picture of an actual mangy dog. When you have a mangy animal, its fur is falling out a little bit. It isn't living with humans. It might have like different insects attacking it and so that makes its hair fall out. But many stray dogs or wild dogs, we would also consider mangy. So, a mangy dog is not healthy. A mangy cat is not healthy. They're usually very, very skinny because they don't have enough food and they look sickly. They look a little bit sick, okay? So, definitely uh when you have a stray dog or wild dog, it might appear mangy to you. And then we have purebred. A purebred animal is something like a German shepherd. When I was young, the type of cow we had was a Holstein cow. There are certain types of domesticated animals that are purebreds. Certain types of dogs are considered purebred. So, if you have a certain type of poodle or a German shepherd or a golden retriever, we would consider those animals to be purebreds. Oscar is not a purebred. He is a mixture of three different kinds of dog, I think. So, he is not a purebred dog at all. Hey, let me just check something for a sec here. I'm a little find it a little odd that we only have 90 viewers watching. So, I'm wondering if that's uh accurate. Normally, there's far more than that. Oh, I guess not. Maybe today, we don't have as many people. That's just the way it goes sometimes, I guess. I should make sure my settings are all correct. Looks like it's all correct. You guys all found this live stream fine, correct? Maybe YouTube is just working a little differently today. Maybe people didn't get a notification. That could be. Um hey, let me do an audio check and then let's get to members only chat. Let me get that setting going for a sec here. Customization. Members save. So, we're gonna move into members only. Vito says, Bob, we can't find this stream live stream on your channel. That's interesting, Vito. I didn't set anything different than normal but maybe there's something weird happening with YouTube. It doesn't matter. I'm happy to teach all 90 of you. That's no problem. I just thought maybe I had done something wrong. Maybe I had set something wrong. Oh, well. Hey, if you are a member, we are in members only chat mode right now. So, if you are a member and you have a question about how we describe animals in English, you can ask it. I know when I scrolled back, Dimitri had the question, what's the difference between an elk and a moose? An elk is more like a deer and a moose is a large animal with very unique looking horns. So, um you'll have to look up a picture of each and you'll get a sense of the difference. Let's see here. Um Mode says I have 90 watching now. Yeah, this must be something up. Lolly says platypus equals orthornique. I need my reading glasses to read that in French. Cool. Uh Linda, I can't see Brent here today. Did the ghost kidnap him last night? No, but I think as things get less, as things get more open in Canada and the and the United States, it's uh fun to do other things as well. Um Maria C. Today, it's more like a private lessons lesson. We should take advantage of that. Yes. Lolly, I am a true cat lover. There are some people that really, really love cats for sure. Some of my kids love cats. Mode eggs. Yes, an island resort said the same as Vito. I didn't notice anything different. Oh, okay. 
Norma, in my device appears 36 are watching. It must be wrong. Now, I think that's probably accurate. You know, YouTube, usually everything works really, really well but sometimes it doesn't. Um, let's see here. Rod says, Mr. Bob, I've never visited a zoo because I'm so afraid of lions, tigers and snakes. So, I do not like big cats. That's how we talk about lions and tigers. Um, I mean, I like them but I don't like being close to them. They are frightening and I do not like snakes at all. Semra says, hope you are well, Bob. Nice to be with you. Listen and watch you. Thanks, Semra. Linda, yes, it's so cozy with a few people. Um, it's almost all members here, isn't it? So, it must be, that must be what's happening. Um, SEO Wu, hello, Bob. What does this mean? Stray dog. So, a stray dog is a dog that doesn't live with its owners anymore. So, if Oscar ran away, if Oscar just decided he wanted to go live in the local town and not have an owner, he would be a stray dog. Uh let's see here. Brent was going to spend the night in a cemetery. Yes, Brent was gonna do a video in a cemetery. I'm not sure if he's working on that still. Um let's see here. Oh, that's why Linda was asking if the ghosts got him. <laughs> yes, good question. Uh anyway, hi teacher Bob. I found this on the internet. If you bite it and you die, it's poisonous. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. Oh, I see. Let me read again. If you bite it and you die, it's poisonous. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. Hope this helps. Yes, that's a great way to remember it. Key part, Canadian geese sometimes are dangerous. They are a little bit not quite ferocious but they are a little bit ornery as mode eggs mentioned earlier. Maria C. Hey, Bob. No questions today but I have to watch your 360 video on the phone because I watched it on TV and I couldn't see the magic. Yeah, maybe with your controller you could do it but you definitely needed to watch it on a computer or on your phone. On a computer, you could use your mouse to move it. Uh let's see. Evgeny. Hello, Bob. Did you hear something about Amersky Tiger? I have not heard anything about it. SEO Wu says, thanks, Bob. Modeg says, what, where's my favorite animal, Mr. Bob? The bobolink. You know how much I like it. I do not have a picture of the bobolink here. Uh let's get a question on the screen from Gala. Hi, dear teacher. How are you? Could you tell me what does spring chicken mean? When someone's a spring chicken, it usually means they're older but acting in a very youthful way. So, I'm uh quite old by the way but I'm still somewhat of a spring chicken sometimes. If I go to a wedding and there's dancing, I will dance. So, I'm certainly an older person who has energy and acts like a young person sometimes. Um let's get to the next question. Um Hiroyuki says, hi, Bob. What kind of animal will you return to to when you leave this earth? Have a great day. I don't know what my I guess you might call it your spirit animal or or what my animal is that I might be a version of. I think I would like to think I'm some kind of lion but I'm probably more a mouse or something like that. We'll see. Um let's see here. Mode egg says, I'm the eager beaver today. Good good use of a I should have put beaver in here with the word eager. That one is not on the list mode. I should have put that one on. A stray dog is the same as a tramp like the story lady and the tramp. Yes but we don't use the word tramp very much anymore. That's a very old word but yes, a stray dog would be the same. Naomi, how old is Oscar? How did your family meet him? We got him as a puppy from a family friend. And I think he's about four or five years old in human years. Evgeny, this type of tiger is very rare and he lives in the far east of Russia. I will have to look that up, Evgeny, after the live stream. Um let's see. Modeg's a little bit off topic but have you and Brent planned your meetup? We have not. The border isn't open but is kind of open. We're we're thinking we might not be able to meet up until later this fall or maybe next summer. We're just both kind of waiting patiently to see what happens. Uh let's see here. This is from Cavish. So, I'm over here now. Hi, Bob. I saw that you used the word odd to describe chipmunks in a video as they emanate at one time. Can we use intermittent instead of odd? No, we would say odd. Definitely, yes. We would definitely say odd. Hey, give me one sec. I'm gonna do something here. 
So, please be patient. I'm gonna share the link to my live stream on my community page for a sec just so that people can uh I am live. The link wasn't shared. Here it is. Let me just do this for a sec. I wonder if YouTube didn't notify people. No, that's not the one I want. Oh, that's weird. Sorry, bear with me, everybody. Oh, okay. I'm wondering. Oh, I see. I'm streaming. I I did do something wrong, I think. Something got mixed up this morning. So, let me just. uh... Yep, this was my fault this morning. Uh, I am live. I'm right here. I'm just gonna share the link. We might see some more people come in in a sec. Um, but somehow something got mixed up in the streaming software. So, okay, I'm gonna switch off. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna switch off members only chat. There we go. And then I'm gonna do an audio check. On my screen, I'm excellent. And then we are going to go back to the lesson. There we go. Okay. Sorry. Maybe I cut off the um, members only chat a little short. Sorry about that. But we are going to continue the lesson now. Rabid. So, there is a a disease called rabies that animals sometimes get. In Canada, if you see a skunk during the day, It's usually a rabid skunk. It usually has rabies. Normally, skunks kind of come out at night and they kind of walk around at night but definitely uh if you see a skunk during the day, it probably has rabies. Oscar, our dog, got a needle. He got vaccinated so that he doesn't get rabies. If Oscar got in a fight with a wild animal, there's a chance he would get rabies. Um and then we would say that he would then he would be a rabid dog. So, we got him vaccinated so that this doesn't happen. Um let's see here. Scaly. So, fish have scales. So, fish have what are called scales on their body. When you catch a fish before you eat it, you have to get the scales off and you might use a scaling knife. But fish are definitely scaly. They have all these tiny little pieces. It's almost like they're wearing a little bit of armor on their body like a knight would wear but they are scaly in the sense that um they don't have fur. Uh they definitely are not like um let me see. They're definitely not like a fox. They're definitely not like a dog. Instead, they have this really smooth scaly outer portion. Fish are delicious says Semra. Yes. Um so, here's the goose. Earlier, we were talking about the Canada goose as being a little bit ferocious. They attack people sometimes. They're a little bit scary but they're also web-footed. If you look at the feet of this goose, you can see that um between what would be a human's fingers or toes, there's actually some skin. So, the the goose is web-footed. Ducks are also web-footed. There are a variety of web-footed animals on this planet. Vicious. So, when I think of the word vicious, I often think of dogs that are trying to bite people. Sometimes, when I go for my walk, there is a dog that runs out and barks at me and growls at me and I just feel like he wants to bite me. I feel like he might be a vicious dog. Sometimes, dogs are very, very friendly but sometimes, dogs can be very, very vicious. I'm not sure if this picture is a picture of a vicious dog. He might just be yawning like oh like maybe he's tired. So, either way, um sometimes dogs can be vicious. And then tame. So, when you think about going to the circus, sometimes there is a lion tamer who has lions which are normally wild animals 
but they have tamed that animal. So, that animal is very, very tame. So, um I have never been to the circus. I don't think I've seen a tame lion ever. So, the lion tamer will train the lions to be friendly towards them and they'll do a little circus act um and the lions are tame. I would never trust a lion. I would never think that a lion lion is actually tame. It would it would scare me, I think. No matter how nice the lion is, I would still be afraid of it. Clever. So, raccoons. We have a lot of raccoons in Canada and they are very, very clever. When you use the word clever, it means smart and really good at figuring things out. Uh raccoons are good at opening garbage cans. Raccoons are good at um finding their way in to different places. They're good at um they use their paws in order to um do certain things that other animals can't. In the cities in Canada, sometimes raccoons are able to open up garbage cans and those kinds of things and it makes people very, very annoyed. They put their garbage out and then raccoons open them no matter what they do. No matter how they lock them, the raccoons figure it out. They are very clever. Tiny. So, um this is I think a teacup poodle. I'm not super familiar with them but some animals are very, very tiny. This is a very cute dog by the way um but uh some animals are massive like the elephant and some animals are definitely much smaller and very, very tiny and sometimes they're just cute. So, just a little review here. Sorry, wrong screen. I think I missed one. Oh, okay. That's later on. Um puppies are very cute. We do use the word cute to talk about babies, to talk about puppies, to talk about kittens. We'll we'll just say, oh, they're so cute. Um our baby goats are actually very cute. Baby goats jump around a lot and they jump onto their mums. So, their mums are laying in the in the pen or the pasture and the baby goats are really cute because they jump on top and they jump up and down and then they jump off. Actually, I should have put a picture of a baby goat here. They are very, very cute. So, again, when an animal is cute, it just is fun to watch. It makes you um just kind of go, aw, they're so cute. Feathered. So, a parrot is feathered. This is either a parrot or a macaw. I think all parrots are macaws. I'm not sure exactly. This isn't a science lesson but a feathered animal has feathers. So, things like ducks all birds that fly have feathers. Um chickens have feathers. I think you know what feathers are. They're a long uh piece of kind of a hard substance with soft hair like things coming off of it. So, this parrot is definitely feathered. So, feathered animals have feathers. Migratory. So, when you have things like ducks, if they fly south in the winter, we would say that they are migratory. There are a lot of migratory birds in Canada. There are a lot of birds that come back in the spring and then they fly south in the winter. So, they enjoy the warmer weather here in Canada but then they go south um when it starts to get cold. We also have a funny word in English called uh we have a word snowbird. A snowbird is a person who lives in Canada who goes and lives in the southern United States during the winter. So, a lot of people, their grandparents, they would say, oh, they're snowbirds. That means around the beginning of January, they move to Florida or another southern US state and they live there um for a little bit. During the colder part of Canada's seasons and during the winter season in Canada, they move to Florida. Nocturnal. So, a nocturnal animal is an animal that sleeps during the day or at least doesn't really do a lot during the day and they tend to go out at night. The bat is probably the most common nocturnal animal. A nocturnal animal is an animal that hunts at night, um is active at night and during the day takes some time to either snooze or simply not do very much at all. And then adorable, this is the picture I was looking for earlier. So, puppies are cute and adorable. Kittens which are baby cats are also very cute and adorable. So, we have a lot of adorable kittens on the farm at certain times of the year. They are very, very cute. They are fun to play with. They really like um swatting at things with their paws and sometimes they fight with each other which is very adorable as well. Let me just take a little sip of water there. 
and then cuddly. When an animal is cuddly, it means it likes to be with you. Maybe it likes to sit on your lap. Maybe it likes to sit beside you on the couch. A cuddly animal just likes to be touching a human being, usually their own. So, cats can be very cuddly. Dogs can be very cuddly. Certainly, there are animals in the world that um as humans, we like having around and they are very, very cuddly. Probably, the two most common would be puppies, cats, kittens and dogs. There you go. Well, hey, I think I went a little quicker than normal but that's okay. I'm gonna spend some time answering some questions now. So, just give me a sec. Let me just check something for a minute though. I want to make sure. Yes, there we go. Okay. Let me check something else here too. I might have simply clicked the wrong thing earlier. I think that's what I did. Okay, I'm gonna answer a few questions and then we are gonna wrap this up. Sagar says, hi, teacher Bob. How are you doing? I want to know your national animal. I believe it is the beaver. The national animal of Canada, I think, is the beaver. I'm not 100% sure about that but I'm pretty sure it is the beaver. Um Fox says, you've placed a beautiful fox in the picture. Nice to look at. I would like you not to forget about the nasty cockroaches and annoying flies, carriers of diseases. So, yes, animals can be problematic. That means they can cause problems for humans. Sometimes animals carry diseases and it's not a good thing, okay? Um so, definitely things like flies and cockroaches. Also, mosquitoes in Canada. There are some mosquitoes that carry disease. We also have ticks that carry disease. Um not not very nice but yes, um fox, I'm glad you liked the picture of the fox. So, hey folks, we're a little earlier than normal. I think that uh things went a little too quickly um this morning or I went a little more quickly than normal. I think I messed up. Um I think I started the live stream to a test file instead of to the actual link. So, a bunch of people probably missed it. So, sorry about that. Hopefully, people can watch the repeat on Sunday um but I think I'm going to wrap this up even though it's only been 45 minutes and I will See you tomorrow. We will do a live stream tomorrow and I will get it right um but tomorrow's live stream will probably be inside because it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. So, you'll see the same background but we'll do the live lesson inside. Before I go, I do wanna thank Jim and Brad for uh moderating. A little bit of an easier job today when it's mostly members who are here. Uh and I do wanna say bye to Linda, Maria, Vito, SEO Wu, Semra, Rod, Winnie, Wanda, Mode Eggs, Semra, Key Park, Scrolling Brack, Maria C, Norm. I'm saying people's names twice now. Miranda and everyone else who is here. Thank you so much. Dimitri, thank you for being here as well. Have a good day. Sorry for the short lesson, slightly shorter lesson today but uh hey, that's how it goes sometimes. Have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow with another live English lesson.